Under Grand Prince Dmitri, Moscow had grown rich and allied itself with old adversaries. Together, the Rus allies were ready to challenge the dominance of the Mongols and stopped paying them tribute. On the banks of the River Don, Dmitri would stake his life on being the first Rus leader to defeat the Horde in battle. Arriving at Kulikovo, Prince Dmitri and his army would rendezvous with allied forces from all principalities loyal to Moscow. Together, they would challenge more than a century of Mongol dominance. Before the battle, Dmitri would recruit soldiers from nearby villages. He would also ride to his allies who were awaiting their battle orders. The villagers pledged all the soldiers they could spare strengthening Dmitri's position against the Horde. Got 
дети и родимые! Скачу на... Ворзи! На подошву ты! Dimitri delivered the battle orders to his allies. They would take up position on the Smolka river forts and ready themselves for the enemy's arrival. With a loyal army assembled, Dimitri began the march north to meet the enemy in battle. Станете воине! Dimitri would oversee the battle with his own detachment of fighters moving to support any ford crossing that seemed at risk of being overwhelmed. As Mongol war drums sounded through the fog, Dmitri and his men steeled themselves for the arrival of the horde. The Rus were emboldened by this first small victory and stood firm on the Smolka River, ready for the enemy's next attack. Civilians from the province, although unable to fight, vowed to construct defenses for Dmitri should he need to fall back from the northern forts. Dmitri's allied villages had finished constructing a line of defences, which Dmitri could choose to fall back to if he lost the fords.
Фаревник готов наступить. Путь! Вот накази соги! Будете надо на войне! Войне наступаем! Послушание есть до всей час. Ворог нападает! Скачу на плен. Готовы будете войне! Dimitri and his Rus allies held the fords and eliminated the Mongol vanguard. While the enemy regrouped after the initial skirmish, the prince ordered the Rus to fall back to the hilltop defences behind them. As they retreated, nearby Rus provinces mustered additional forces to Dimitri's side. In planning to face the horde, Dmitri had called upon a cavalry detachment to stage an ambush. He received word that his reinforcements had begun to arrive and bided his time for the right moment to call them to battle. Наступайте, ладницы, смелее! Оружие, суки, справны! Ожидаем наказы! Ой, не следуй наказам! Two great armies clashed in the fog, but Dmitri's men stood firm.
With the terror of the Horde on their doorstep, Rus villagers once again rushed to construct more defenses, this time on the banks of the Don River. numbers dwindled as the Rus struck down their ranks. Seeking an even stronger position, Dmitri ordered his forces to fall back to the Don River, where his allies had constructed new defenses. As the Rus fell back, a fresh detachment of reinforcements joined the fight. The cavalry detachment was in position and waited for Dmitri's signal to strike. Dimitri saw his opportunity and called in the full force of his cavalry. This was his chance to ambush the unsuspecting enemy. To the River Don, the Rus held their ground in a last stand against their ferocious enemy. Come 
Все наказы ожидают. На коне, ладницы! Наказывайте! Братья! Двигайтесь, она! Ладницы в смелые готовы In the last gasps of the desperate battle, the Rus would not back down. It would be victory or death. For the first time in over a hundred years of subjugation, the armies of the Rus defeated the Mongols in battle. For three days and nights, Prince Dmitri buried the fallen in the fields of Kulikovo. He became known as Donskoy, the victor at the River Don.